Hi, welcome to New York, home of the US Open. The US Open is the highest attended annual sporting event in the world. Um, every year we seem to be breaking attendance records and that doesn't just happen by accident. Um, there are a number of different events that happen here and the US Open is really um, an opportunity for the governing body for tennis in America, the United States Tennis Association, to really showcase um, their mission and what they're about. U.S. Open, which was at the Westside Tennis Club in Queens. And uh, Westside Tennis Club has historically been both clay, then they went to a grass, and then they went back to a hard, hard truth material. And then in 1978, uh, the USTA had the foresight to uh, negotiate with the city to, to get property at Flushing Meadows and the Louis Armstrong Stadium was built. When the USTA decided to move from the Westside Tennis Club to this, this landfill, you know, called Flushing Meadows and that they were going to spend 14 million dollars to build a stadium, I thought they were nuts. Obviously I was wrong. Uh, not only was it successful, and it became a, the revenue producer for our nonprofit. And, and basically, we had to, to be subsidized by the US Open. You know, the, the, the guys smarter than me, the forefathers of the USDA, decided that they were going to expand. And that's when they built the Arthur Ashe Stadium. And, you know, we're now at the 215 US Open, and you can see what they've done. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a $300 million business. So at the US Open, uh, the fan experience has changed quite a bit. Obviously they're putting in literally half a billion dollars in upgrading the facilities with a roof and all that stuff. But the fan experience court is actually on the indoor course, which is the tennis center. Uh, the National Tennis Center is on the site. And one of the courts is designated as the Fan Experience Court, the American Express Fan Experience Court. And throughout the day, there's all kinds of cool things that go on there. Part of what I did this year is I hosted that court. So we had two or three hours a day where we would run 10 and under players using the proper equipment and scale the right size. And we did all kinds of games and competitions for that. Then we'd come back in the evening and we would do just some adult drills for people that were 14 and older. And then we also had play site technology there this year. And that was really fun because the players got to hit a serve and see how hard I was going. They got to hit a challenge to see how depth and how deep they were hitting their shots and they had a little competition in that regard. So, well, I think it's critical because obviously you have the income from the televisions and the televisions are so nice and everybody in the U.S. seems to own a high-def television. So you can see it in the comfort of your home, really, for free. So to get the people out and experience it at a totally different energy level, it's super important, I think, to be aware of it and to increase the fan experience and to elevate it. And I think the USDA has done a great job, particularly with this event. There's so much going on. There's just no difference. There's a huge difference, frankly, between watching it at home, which is really great, but then being there and feeling the energy of the crowd and the night crowd and just the energy that comes along with being present, uh, there's nothing like it. One of the huge upgrades that the U.S. Open made is a new practice court setup where it's really much better for viewing on the practice courts. The practice courts are where a lot of fans are beat. They'll, they'll bypass some important matches and go to the practice courts so you get much closer. You can see these guys working out exactly what they do. So the new venue that they have for practice with the elevated uh, seating, which is wild sport way more people to watch and get close to the players during their practice session it's just essential then you know we have the roof of course the uh, the new stadiums that are being built we got a new grandstand coming and more out outer courts and the whole thing is going to be just amazing the most important thing is the people that come to watch because without them the event probably wouldn't exist the crowds the organization the fact that we talk about it all the time the city didn't exist this city didn't exist and now it does it's joyful it's well managed um, we're all excited to be here. Happy there's a little bit of a cl cloud cover today, um, so we're excited. Uh, well, I'd love to see Fed. I'd love to see Serena. I'd love to see Maria Sharapova. I don't know if they're playing today, but maybe we'll get to see in practice. Love to see Nadal, and just looking to see some great tennis. to manage the U.S. Open volunteers that are here uh, to support all of the 
different areas of the U.S. Open, including the foundation, the volunteer lounge, the bookstore, U.S. Open Access, and Subscriber Central. The most important thing we look for in a U.S. Open volunteer is how they interact with the public. We want them to uh, have great interpersonal skills, uh, be able to deal with challenges that come their way as far as questions that they're asked and be able to direct if they don't have the specific answers. So they serve as a function as, a as a walking information desk because so many people recognize that they have an orange shirt on and so they know that they can approach them and so we want them to be very approachable and be able to give as much knowledge and information as they have or at least direct them to the area where they can get that information. We do have an overwhelming amount of people who want to uh, thankfully be a U.S. Open volunteer and the way that we go about that is through telephone interviews. The specific coordinators for those areas reach out to the volunteers and ask them a variety of different questions. What is their tennis background? They don't have to have a tennis background, but we want to know, have they worked in their section before? Have they uh, worked on a, an other events? And so we, we want to have a rapport with them, know that they can speak that they can interact with the public and, and have a, a knowledgeable conversation. Without them, um, many of the areas that we have uh, wouldn't be able to be serviced. And from a revenue uh, impact, it uh, provi provides about 200 volunteers that come and their services are free. So it allows us to be able to offer those the support in those areas without having uh, a financial uh, impact for that. That wasn't a focus that we actually have had at McDonald's. It wasn't until 1980 that McDonald's Corporation really took this topic seriously and hired someone from the outside to come in and create a department at that time called the Affirmative Action Department. And that person is the one that really introduced McDonald's to diversity and affirmative action. We've always seen the importance of making sure we had a diverse workforce, that our franchisees were diverse, as well as our suppliers and vendors. So for me, it's been, I've been a part of this evolution at McDonald's for a number of years to bring diversity to life, to make diversity of what it is today. And we've been fortunate to have senior leadership at McDonald's who are committed and hold others accountable for making diversity a reality. So within our organization at McDonald's, I feel very comfortable that the evolution has been just tremendous in making sure that we build one an inclusive work environment and that throughout the organization diversity is critical and important to our business and our leadership understands that. Therefore we have a, a department specifically targeted to multicultural marketing and within that department there's sports marketing and they make sure that we are supporting within the community a number of different sports and that the engagement of different people uh, is very high in terms of making sure we reach out to the diverse communities that we serve. And I would, I would say that many of the commercials that we have kind of show that to our customers and we're very mindful of how our customers view us and because of that we are highly engaged in all the diverse communities around the world. One of the things that we're very proud of is the engagement and involvement of our franchisees locally in the community because that's really where it's going to take place and it should take place locally in the communities particularly where we do business and hopefully that's every community. So we're very proud to be a part of the community. Our franchisees are a big part of the community and support all the sports locally in their um, areas. All companies should be involved in community engagement. 
McDonald's itself is in 120 countries. So when you think about that and, and the different neighborhoods we are in around the globe, one of the important things is, again, the engagement locally. And I think it's very important that we help our communities grow, help the youth within our community. I know that our franchisees are very much engaged in the community. So I think it's a good thing and I think it's also a very important thing that we continue to support the communities uh, as it relates to all the sports, including tennis, which is my number one sport. Every day was different, uh, and it was um, pretty early in the morning till pretty late at night. I would say I would have maybe three to four and a half hours of sleep a night because I was also working full time for my law firm. But it was thrilling, it was exciting, there was a lot of planning meetings that we would have at times. Other times you're meeting with lots of different constituents to support them. And then you're traveling a great deal, both throughout this country and internationally, to support the sport. Continuing on the path that my predecessor had started to transform the USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center. Uh, the US Open is the highest annual attended sporting event in the world. And it was getting crowded, and a little compact for our fans, and it wasn't the ideal fan experience. And so we felt we needed to retrofit it. And um, as I said, my predecessor started that and I carried that mantle and we announced it during my administration. I was also a very a big advocate for a roof, uh, that it was time that we have one. We had a number of challenges uh, in terms of aesthetics, feasibility and cost. And I really pushed hard for that and kept saying, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. And as you probably have seen, if you've been out to the open, we now have the structure and next year we'll have the roof. So that was certainly something that was very important to me um, during my term. Another was what we called our Ten and Under uh, or Youth Tennis Initiative. Uh, we uh, as a sport had either tried and failed or didn't really realize the importance of kid sizing our sport. Lots of other sports, baseball, basketball, football, soccer, hockey, have the equipment kid size for, for those kids so they can get into the sport, and we didn't. We had these big, clunky rackets on these huge courts with these yellow balls bouncing over kids' heads. And we realized it was important to bring it down to their level. And so we have lower compression balls, smaller rackets on smaller courts where kids can have success and most importantly, fun. And that has enabled us to bring in a lot more kids into the game, and I think will sustain and grow our sport for years to come. The USGA owns the US Open, so it owns the highest annual attended sporting event in the world. Um, and we run that event, and we run it as an absolute first-class, world-class event. It brings in over $750 million a year to the city of New York. Uh, so it's an economic engine that not only fuels New York, it fuels uh, the um, basically the whole organization. 80% of our revenue comes from the U.S. Open. And um, our staff and our volunteers work together to, to put on what we think is uh, the finest tennis tournament in the world. We were one of the first sports that uh, really um, em emphasized the importance of diversity and inclusion and recognized that it's not only the right thing to do, but also there's a real strong business case for it. So for example, during my administration, I set up a sub, uh, four subcommittees in the Diversity and Inclusion Committee uh, to focus on African Americans, Latinos, um, the Asian population, and the uh, LGBT population. Because again, we want to be sure that we're inclusive of everybody. And a lot of other sports aren't doing this. Um, Katrina has now taken it to a whole new level uh, Katrina Adams, our current president, because she is really focused on the Latino uh, population, which is about 60 million in our, in our country. And she's doing it in a way that appeals to the Latino community by focusing on families. 
and I think it will be very successful. Don't forget, by 2043, this country will reach racial equi equilibrium. And if we don't uh, move with the times, we are going to die as a sport. And I think we're doing just the opposite. It really is important to understand that when you're looking at how a world-class sporting event is managed and organized, it's more than just the scheduling, more than just the tennis players, more than just the tennis. But then there's a lot of activity that is going on in and around the grounds, both and during the event um, and these are all an important part um, of, of making this make the synergy of the event to have good associations with our sponsors most of whom are long-term such as Polo Ralph Lauren Again, this gives a connotation of quality and association um, with the brand um, and this is also an important message for uh, the fans and, and, and those people visiting the event. So the US Open is an established event and every year we're looking at how to make things better. Uh, a lot of our concentration has been on social media um, and developing um, the social media channels. we understand that the, the, the average sports fan now at the US Open wants to be more interactive and wants to be more engaged and so uh, the US Open really does work uh, to, to facilitate that. Um, so there's a lot of exciting things going on here um, at the US Open.